Hallelujah. So let us uh, uh, go to the uh, uh, to the portion. Uh, I mean, you know, actually, I prepared uh, almost uh, the introduction of the uh, topic, and also uh, there are, I mean, uh, maybe five or six points that I have prepared. But I know that uh, uh, I'll be uh, able to cover only uh, the introduction and uh, the the, the, uh, the first two uh, points of this message. But even then. Let us all sit in the presence of God with a uh, prayerful attitude so that uh, uh, let God uh, may speak to us uh, this morning. Hallelujah. So the topic uh, which I have selected for this, uh, for this uh, today's message is the Christian liberty and the brotherly obligations. The Christian liberty and the brotherly obligations. The Christian liberty and the brotherly obligations. You know, uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, Brother Jason to uh, read the Bible verses today uh, for this message. I mean, uh, you know, we are going to uh, read Galatians chapter one, 5 verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 is the text verse for uh, our today's message. Uh, but we will be uh, focusing some of the uh, the other verses from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, as we move on. I mean, so now we are going to read uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. I request uh, Jason Brother to read that Worse. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened against by a yoke of slavery. Amen. So the topic which I am going to speak today is the Christian liberty and the brotherly obligations. You know, whenever you hear this topic, you might be thinking that okay, what is this pastor is going to speak? preach about the Christian liberty and the brotherly uh, obligations. You know, we just read that uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, then we'll be moving to uh, the first Corinthians. Now, uh, in this verse, Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, I mean, uh, Apostle Paul uh, speaks about uh, uh, mainly three things are there. Uh, Apostle Paul is speaking about mainly three things, uh, like uh, uh, you, can, you can just uh, maybe uh, think about uh, uh, the main uh, three points are the Christian freedom uh, uh, and uh, uh, standing uh, firm uh, and the, the, the yoke of uh, uh, yoke of slavery. You know there are mainly three uh, points. I mean uh, we can see in that uh, particular verse that the, the first one is uh, that the Christian freedom and uh, secondly uh, standing firm in Christendom and the third one is the yoke of slavery. The yoke of slavery. So there is no doubt that we received the freedom when we accepted Jesus as our personal savior. And uh, uh, when, we, when, when Jesus came into our heart and we are enjoying the liberty and we have in Jesus Christ. So we believe that we have received the freedom from the Lord and we have the liberty from the Lord. I mean, when we are worshiping God. We are enjoying in the presence of God, and we are saying that okay, we are the we are the people that we are saved from all the clutches of the sin and all the bondages, and we are in. I mean, enjoying in the presence of God. Even I mean, when when uh, we used to uh, say uh, many things about uh, this liberty, and uh, we used to say that once we were uh, living in sin and darkness and in slavery of Satan and worldly pleasures. But now, what a freedom that we have and the relaxation that we have in our Christian life. Hallelujah. So we are free now and do not have any, any, any bondages and we are free from all the bondages of this world. Amen. Praise God for that. Let's praise God for that because, I mean, we are yes. free from all yes. the bondages and God has set us free. I mean, I mean, for the glory of God. Hallelujah. But now, Apostle Paul gives us a warning in this particular verse, Galatians chapter 5, verse, verse 1, that even though you are set free and even though you got the, uh, got the liberty, I mean, there are many chances that you might be yoked again under the slavery of many things knowingly or unknowingly. I mean, now we are enjoying in the presence of God and we are saying that we are set free. And we don't have any slavery. We are, I mean, I mean, above the, I mean, bondage of bondage of sin and Satan. But at the same time, you know, we are thinking that, I mean, about even uh, Apostle Paul is saying that 
I mean, there are many chances that we may be, I mean, again, I mean, become under the under the yoke of the slavery of Satan or sin. I mean, you know, you remember that last week I was preaching from the, the, the only one prophetical book of the New Testament, that is the book of Revelation. I mean, I think you remember that uh, what was the what was the main topic that we were we were discussing in the in the in the last uh, previous I mean uh, previous I mean Sunday. What was that? Huh? I mean, on the on the Lord's day in the spirit or in the spirit on the Lord's day. That was from the book of Revelation, the only prophetical book of the New Testament. But today. I would like to speak uh, uh, from the epistle of Apostle Paul to Corinthians. I mean, Apostle Paul has written, I mean, totally two uh, letters or totally two uh, epistles to the, the Corinthian church. Now, we will be discussing many things from, uh, I mean, uh, uh, his letter, the first letter uh, to the Corinthians. You know, when you listen uh, to this message, uh, sometimes, you know, you may, you may be feeling that, okay, it's just like a, just like a Bible study or something. But uh, no worries, you know, uh, I think sometimes uh, uh, it is good to teach the, teach the word of God on Sundays also, I mean, instead of preaching. But uh, if you feel that it's a Bible study, no problem, you, you can just uh, go through that. And I know that there are many people, uh, I mean, noting down all these points and all the Bible verses. Uh, for you, I'll be going very uh, slowly and uh, uh, I will be showing the points and uh, all the slides and everything, the Bible verses and everything. And if anybody is not, I mean, attending for the Sunday service, and you can you can just remember that you have uh, the, the the all the uh, our videos are uploaded in the YouTube also. You can go to the YouTube our website of our church and you can uh, listen. And you must listen that because uh, I mean, if you are not attending for the Sunday service, I mean, okay. So let us come back to the the, the point that you know, Apostle Paul is writing the letter to the the, the Corinthian church. You know, uh, we have to, I mean, know one thing that, you know, whenever we listen the word of God, it must, it must be a blessing for the people of God. You know, whenever I think, you know, whatever I speak, that should be, that should be, a, 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 that should be very clear and understandable to the people. And that's the reason that I'm going through this way. I mean, so now let us uh, uh, turn our attention to, I mean, uh, 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 first quote in this chapter 8 verse 9. First Corinthians chapter eight verse nine. We will read that verse and we will, I mean, uh, think about many things from the uh, from uh, First Corinthians. Yes, and we'll read that verse. Uh, First Corinthians chapter eight verse nine. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Okay, so we will we will come to that point. You know, this verse also speaks about the Christian liberty or the Christian freedom. I mean, so Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 was speaking, Apostle Paul is speaking there about the slavery and the yoke of the slavery. I mean, and you have to be stand firm in Christ because there are many chances that you may fall down. There are many chances that you may be, I mean, under the yoke of the same slavery of Satan and sin. I mean, now here he's speaking something else to the people at Corinth. What is that? I mean, the Christian liberty of a Christian freedom, the, the, the Christian liberty of a, a Christian believer. Now, now, in order to understand the clear meaning of this verse, in order to understand the clear meaning of this verse, we need to know something about the background and context of these letters. You know, Apostle Paul was writing many letters to the, to the different churches in, uh, in different areas. So whenever we read one verse or one chapter or one book, we have to understand that every book or every chapter or every verse of a Bible has a context and, 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 and a background. I mean, so now we will go through that thing and then only we will understand what is the actual, I mean, meaning of the verse which is written in First Corinthians. I mean, so we have to make it clear that, I mean, something it is there. The, the context is there. The background is there. Without understanding the context or the background of the I mean, verse, I mean, it is not easy to, I mean, I mean clearly, I mean, get the or grasp the, the, the meaning of the verse. So the first and second letters to the Corinthians are written by, written by Apostle Paul to the believers of Christ, I mean, Corinthian church, to the believers of Corinthian church. And according to First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, according to First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, we will read that verse also, 7, verse 1. Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relation with a woman. 
Yes, okay. So according to this verse, you know, Corinthian believers wrote a letter to Paul regarding many confusions that had, they had among the believers. They were having many confusions in the, in the church. So regarding that, they were writing a letter to Apostle Paul and he, they were asking, what is the conclusion for this? We have this problem and we are facing these challenges and what is the conclusion from you as an apostle? What is the conclusion? And this letter is the reply for that letter. The Corinthian believers, they wrote a letter to Apostle Paul. Then this letter, the first Corinthian letter, is the reply for those people from Apostle Paul. So remember one thing, that it was not written to the unbelievers, but to the believers who were always boasting that they are practicing all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So they were just, I mean, I mean, saying that we have all the gift of the Holy Spirit and we are enjoying the presence of God and we are singing and we are listening to the word of God and we are worshiping God. Amen. But Apostle, Apostle Paul is not writing for the unbelievers, but he is writing to the believers. You know, this morning, let me tell you one thing. Even though we are believers of Jesus Christ, I mean, we need to know many things. We need to know many things. Many times we are not well aware about all those things. I mean, we are just simply living and we are just simply, I mean, worshiping, clapping our hands or, I mean, singing, I mean, unto the Lord. And sometimes you are praying and sometimes you are worshiping and sometimes you are preaching and sometimes you are listening to the word of God. That's okay. But remember one thing that this letter is not writing for the unbelievers. But Apostle, John, Apostle Paul is writing this letter for the believers. You know, those believers were, I mean, I mean, boasting about many things. The Corinthian believers were boasting about many things. You know, they, they were I mean, saying that we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like, uh, I mean, the gift of the prophecy or gift of the speaking in tongues or gift of the miracles and so on. I mean, they were just boasting about all those things. But at the same time, there were many problems among them. Same time, there were many problems among them. So let me tell you uh, one thing that, be reminded always about the realities and try to understand everything properly. You know, whenever we read a portion, whenever we read a, we read a verse or the chapter, we have to make it very clear. There are many realities. You know, even though the church is, I mean, well maintained and even though the church is, I mean, I mean going smoothly and even though the, the church people are, I mean, clapping their hands and worshiping God and speaking in tongues, Still, you have to remember the first century church were having many troubles, many problems, and many divisions inside the church. Hallelujah. You know, this is, this is happening in our, in, in our churches also today. I mean, so let us come back to that point, you know. We have to know the realities. That is there. That is clear. That is there. There are many problems in, in every churches. Every churches. But we have to understand, I mean, it properly, what is the reason of that. I mean, so let us think about the purpose of writing these letters to the Corinthian church on the basis of the, of, the, of the cultural or religious and spiritual background of that area. I mean, oh, no, no, those people, the, the, the Corinthian believers, I mean, receiving this letter on the basis of some issues that is happening in that area or inside the church. You know, they had many things to influence them. I mean, they had many things to influence them. The Corinthian church, I mean, I mean, was, I mean, I mean, having many influences for the culturally and religiously and spiritual background. You know, there are many issues inside the church. And even there were, there were many reasons behind the each issue that they were facing. So let us think about those things briefly and we will come back to the topic of today. I mean, we will come back to the topic of today. What is, what is, the, what is the topic today? What is the topic of the message today? Christian liberty and the brotherly obligation. Christian liberty and the brotherly obligation. Hallelujah. So the Corinthian church was a congregation of both Jews and Greeks. We will go to the, the context of the words or we will go to the I mean, context or background of the, uh, uh, of the Corinthian church. Okay, little bit. I mean, so when we study about the Corinthian church, it was a congregation of, it was a group of, I mean, people uh, are both from the Jewish background and from the Greek background or Gentile background. So, but majority of them were from 
the heathen or Gentile background that you can see from uh, First Corinthians chapter six. So First Corinthians chapter six, when you read that, you will understand that maturity of the people, maturity of the believers from where the Gentile background or the heathen background. So they were often influenced by the pagan worship system. You know, the, 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 the pagan worship system is there. So the Christian believers, I mean, the, the people, those who are coming from the Gentile background and also from the Jewish background, I mean, most of the time, these people were influenced by the pagan worship system. I mean, you know, that, uh, and that also happens usually even today, even today also, if, if, if a person is newly coming uh, to the Christianity, you know, of course, the old, the, the, the old religion or old uh, or belief system will try to uh, get that person back. Is that right? I mean, you know, whenever a, a new person is coming to the Christianity, you know, of course, there are there are many people, there are many old religious people and old belief system uh, that will try to get that person back to the old religion or old belief system. So the Corinthian church believers were also facing that those kinds of influences, those kinds of influences from the society, from the old religion and from the old religious system. Okay, so let us think about those influences one by one. I mean, you know, there are there are many influences that uh, the Corinthian church was facing. At the same time, we will see only only few of them. I mean, uh, firstly, you can see when we read uh, 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 First Corinthians chapters five and six. First Corinthians chapters five and six. There is no verse particularly, but uh, both uh, chapter five and six. You know that the sexual immorality of the city of Corinth. The sexual immorality of the city of Corinth, I mean, had influenced some of the believers of the Corinthian church. That is the first influence. I mean, sexual immorality of the city of Corinth, I mean, had influenced some of the believers of the Corinthian church. That is the background. Secondly, if you read the first Corinthians chapters 8 and 10, first Corinthians chapters 8 and 10. You know, we are not reading any verses from that chapters because the whole chapter is speaking about those points. Right? Uh, in that chapters 8 and 10, we read, some believers were thinking that there is nothing evil in eating the meat that which is already offered to the idols. You know, in First Corinthians chapter 8 and 10, chapters 8 and 10, it says that some of the believers of the Corinthian church, they were thinking that, there is nothing evil, there is nothing bad, or there is nothing wrong when we eat the, the, the meat that had been already offered to the idols. And again, in, in uh, the, the, the next uh, I mean, chapter, maybe uh, chapter 10, okay, chapter, chapter 10, there we read the other thing. That is, some of them were coming to the church and also offering the sacrifices in pagan temple. You know, in chapter 10, the problem is some of the believers were regularly coming to the church. They will worship the Lord in the church, inside the church. Then at the same time, they will go to the, the pagan temple and they were offering the sacrifices in that temple also. That is the, the other problem that the people were, or the church was, I mean, are facing. And next one is in chapters 1, 3, and 11. Chapters 1, 3, and 11. When you go through chapters 1, 3, and 11, we understand that there were divisions and disputes among the people of Corinth. That means among the believers. There were divisions and disputes among the believers. Amen? So that is what we understand. And next one. I mean, when you read uh, uh, Acts, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12. We will read that verse. Then, then I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, what is but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Amen. So when you read uh, um, in, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12, we understand even though they were believers, some of them even denied the fundamental Christian truth and doctrines of the resurrection. It is there. Okay, 15 verse 12. You know, some of the people, even though they were believers, they were believing Jesus Christ and they accepted Jesus as a personal savior. At the same time, some of those people were denying the fundamental Christian truth of the gospel or the resurrection. I mean, so on the basis of these conducts, 
Paul is writing many things and giving some warnings against the evil practices, practices of those people. This is the context, you know. Uh, on, on this context, I mean, Paul is giving them advices that this is should be, this should be done in the church, and that you should not obey that. You should not practice that one, and you have to practice these things. So this is the I mean, reason and the context that, that Apostle Paul is writing to the to the to the people at the Corinthian church, and also he is informing them that. You have to be always reminded about the value and the importance or the greatness of the freedom that you have now. Hallelujah. So he's trying to tell them that you have, today you have a value of the freedom. You have a freedom. You have a liberty. And you must know what is the value and importance and greatness of the freedom that you have today. And telling them that you received this liberty not because of your merit, rather because Jesus died on the cross to give you freedom, to set you free, I mean, to deliver you from the slavery, and you have nothing to boast about yourself. Hallelujah. So Apostle Paul is just warning them and advising them, you do not be boasting about anything of, of your merit. I mean, you receive this freedom, you have that liberty only because of the Jesus Christ death on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Now you are free. You are set free and you are delivered from all kinds of the slavery of this world and slavery of this uh, I mean, Satan and slavery of the sin. But there is nothing to boast about yourself. But only because of the Jesus Christ and his death on the on the cross of Calvary that now you are I mean, getting freedom I mean, from all kinds of slavery. But the believers of Corinth, the church, were misusing the freedom. And they were trying to mingle with the unbelievers in many ways. <coughs> so this is one point, you know. Even though they were knowing everything, those believers, I mean, they were just misusing the freedom. They know that they have the freedom, they have the knowledge, and they have the liberty. But they were trying to mingle with the unbelievers in many ways. Hallelujah. So let us, I mean, let us also uh, be reminded about the value of our freedom, the value of our freedom. Now, the main, I mean, issue of, uh, I mean, this chapter, chapter 8, is eating food which is offered to the idol. Okay, chapter, chapter 8, when you go through that chapter 8, the, the whole chapter is speaking about something, something like food. Or eating the food, or eating the meat. I mean, which is which is offered to the idol. But I am not going to uh, focus only on that issue, but almost uh, uh, all the other issues and evil practices that uh, the Corinthian church were having. Okay, not only uh, not only the one one issue that uh, uh, eating the food uh, which is offered to the idol, but I'll be. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to uh, go through all the all the uh, uh, evil practices that uh, that those people were having. I mean, first of all, let me tell you one thing that you know in the early year of the church, as the Gentiles converts began joining, I mean, Jewish believers in local fellowship, both of them were there. The Gentile converts were there, and the Jewish believers also were there. And and it's, it's an issue arose concerning the eating of the meat. You know, when the Jewish, I mean, converts are coming into the church, and the Gentile converts are coming to the church, what happens? The issue is coming. You know, they were, I mean, I mean, confused about many things, and they were, I mean, uh, asking many questions uh, uh, to the to the leaders of the church, and uh, I mean, the leaders at present uh, on those days they were not able to give the answer for that, and they had a council, and they had a, there, uh, it is called a Jerusalem council or something, and uh, I mean, uh, we will be, I mean, discussing about those things in the later. So now we are coming to that point, you know, now these people, both from the Gentile background, both from, uh, and the Jewish background, they came together to have the fellowship. But there is an issue that, that concerning the e eating the meat, which is already offered for the idols. You know, the, the background is like this. The Greek and Roman society were always promoting the idol worship on those days. And it was common for meat sold in the marketplace to have been consecrated, consecrated as a sacrifice. I mean, false gods prior to the sale. You know, in the marketplace, there is food. In the marketplace, there is meat and everything. But whenever they are selling this, what is happening? It is already concentrated for 
or consecrated for or offered for the for the i mean uh, uh, the the pagan uh, uh, idols the pagan idols so after that only after the offering or after uh, concept, uh, consecration only they will i mean provide uh, the food uh, for the people so the jews were counting that we should not eat the meat because it is offered to idols jews were saying that we don't i mean do the idolatry or we don't worship an idol because we have only one god Amen. So they were saying, the Jewish people were saying, okay, it's an idolatry. We cannot, uh, I mean, worship the idol and we cannot eat that food which is already offered in front of the, in front of the idols. And if we eat that, become, we become also idolaters. And the Gentiles were rejecting that idea. And that teachings, and they said, no problem in eating that food. There is no problem if you eat that food also. This matter became a point of contention or division within the church. This was the main main problem that they were, I mean, they were facing in those days. Hallelujah. But in Acts chapter 15, verse 29, Acts chapter 15, verse 29, there comes a conclusion for that problem. There comes a conclusion for that problem. You read that verse. Acts you ought to abstain from food sacrifice to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Okay. What is that? The Jerusalem Council, that's what I said. The Jerusalem Council settled the matter by, by urging gender converts to abstain from meat sacrificed to, to idols. I mean, this decision was made not to promote the legalism, but to, to, but to make a peace within the church. I mean, so they decided, they decided something, you know, they, they gathered together, the, the Jerusalem Council is called the Jerusalem Council, uh, uh, they gathered together and uh, made a, made a, made a uh, conclusion for this problem, okay, for this, for this problem. So that is, a, that is the context of that, uh, I mean, letter. And let us, let us come to the, to the first point of our, uh, today's message. The first point is, Christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge but of love the christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge but of love amen so that is the first point i would like to bring in your attention that christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge but of love amen so we will read uh, two verses from first Corinthians chapter eight verses uh, uh, okay first Corinthians chapter eight that is verses one and four Verses 1 and 4. Now about food sacrifice to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So then, about eating food sacrifice to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and there is no God but one. Okay. You know, sometimes we used to say that uh, I have this much knowledge about this matter, but remember one thing that always, knowledge is always good, but that will not work out sometimes. You know, when we say that, okay, I have a knowledge uh, about this matter, but that will not work out sometimes. At the same time, the law will work out. The law will work out. The, about that only, I mean, Apostle Paul is speaking here. You know, sometimes to solve the problem, some of the problems, if we use our knowledge or intellectual power, nothing is going to happen. And sometimes the problem may, may, may increase because of our knowledge. At the same time, if we, if we love those problem makers, then the problem is solved. You know, that, that is my I mean, personal experience. You know, sometimes when we I mean, love those problem makers and we, we, if we, if we speak to those people with politely, then that person will be changed and the problem will be solved that is my personal experience you know but uh, sometimes you know okay we say that okay, i have the knowledge and i know that thing and this thing okay I'm, I'm i'm trying to fight against you no nothing is going to happen nothing is going to happen but through love if you're loving that person politely you can speak to that person and say that this is what this is what it is written in bible i mean that's the way that the apostles were following you know in my personal experience uh, let me tell you one thing you know, right after my uh, uh, theological uh, course, uh, I got a chance to uh, teach in the Bible College for the Hebron uh, Christian uh, Academy, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in Kerala. So uh, there was a critical problem 
uh, between four students and, uh, and the principal. You know, principal said uh, uh, those students are making problem and uh, we need to, uh, to, to, to take the action uh, on uh, those four students. You know, students said uh, we are leaving the college and principal is saying uh, we have to take the action about on that for students and students are saying that we have to leave the college and we are going from here. We are no more in this college to study uh, the Bible. And uh, what, what happened, you know, I spoke to those students. I spoke to the students uh, very politely and I prayed for them. I prayed for them and I was just speaking with them uh, in a day. You know, uh, uh, through that, when after my talk and after, after the prayer, the problem is solved. When they, 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 they you, know, you know, what happened? They completed the course and graduated from that college. I mean, but the principal, principal was saying, okay, you have to take an action about uh, on, on the students. But I just said, we'll pray for that. And we'll pray for that. We will, I mean, I mean very politely, we'll speak to those people. And uh, what happened, you know, these, these students, all the students were, I mean, graduated in time, I mean, without any problem. You know, uh, 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 because, uh, uh, because, I mean, uh, I had the freedom. I had the freedom to, to talk with uh, these people. But in, in, in fact, I know, all the rules and regulations of the college. I know the rules and regulations of the college, but that will not work out. That will not work out. You know, even if, if, I, if I'm standing, I mean, with the, 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 the rules and regulations, okay, this is the rules and reg this is the regulation, then uh, nothing is going to happen. But, you know, you know I, I, I have the freedom to take the action also because I was the registrar of that college. But, you know, uh, my knowledge about freedom Okay, didn't work out, rather love made the things possible. Hallelujah. You know, when I'm thinking about my knowledge, okay, I have this knowledge, nothing is going to happen. But when I'm moving with love, and when I, when I started to love those people, those students, and politely speaking to those people, every problem is solved, and nothing is impossible through the love. Hallelujah. So remember, knowledge is not opposed to love, but it is to closely associated with it. As we can see in the in the scriptures, you know, most of the people will say that okay, I have this knowledge and that knowledge, but that you cannot do anything. You can do anything with the knowledge, but through love you can do many things. You know, and if I have the, you know, it says again, if I have the gift of the prophecy, and uh, uh, we will read that verse again, First Corinthians uh, chapter thirteen, verse two. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse two. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. But if I have faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, if I have the gift of the prophecy, know all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have all faith, I mean, so uh, to remove the mountains also, I have the faith like to remove the mountains, and but do not have love, I am nothing. I am nothing. You know, that, that's the reason that I said, you know, even though we have the knowledge about many things and even though we know that we have the freedom and the liberty at the same time we have to think about i mean we have to we have to have the love towards the people then only and there only the the, 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 the solution comes i mean even in first Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 in first Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 also we'll read that, that now about food sacrifice to idols we know that we all, we all possess knowledge knowledge puffs up but love builds up. What is the meaning of that verse? You know, knowledge puffs up, puffs up. Amen? But the love will build the people. Knowledge will puffs up, but the love will build the people. Hallelujah. You know, like a, like a puffs, you, you, you may be knowing that, that how to make the puffs. Okay, <laughs> puffs. And uh, in the bakery, you, if you go to the bakery, and we are also making uh, at home. I mean, sometimes, you know, when, when we, uh, I mean, bake the, the puffs or making the puffs, you know, or the bread also, you know, the, the small piece of a, of a, of a mixed maida or something, I mean, we'll put inside the oven. But that puffs up and becomes bigger and bigger. I mean, it's, it's a small thing. It's a small, I mean, mixed, I mean, item of a maida or something, but it will become a big, a bigger than that, that we put in the oven. You know, this is happening when we have the knowledge. When we say that we have the knowledge of those things and these things, it always pops up, pops up. There is no meaning at all. There is no, I mean, there is no solution for the problem. But when we have 
the love towards the people i mean there is a, there is a, there is a solution that is what i mean apostle apostle paul is writing to the to the people of corinth that, that you should have the love i mean instead of the knowledge because the knowledge George, is pops up hallelujah so remember christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge but of love so we say that we have the we have the liberty we have the christian freedom but we have to think about and um, the christian liberty is not a matter of the knowledge but of love i mean we will go to the second point and we will conclude i mean today's message we will go to the second point that is christian liberty is subjected to our identity as christians christian liberty or christian freedom is subjected to our identity as christians as christians we read uh, i mean two verses from first corinthians chapter 8 uh, 8 i mean verses 3 and 4 verses 3 and 4 but the man who loves god is known by god but then about eating food sacrificed to idols we know that an that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no god but one amen so we it, it is written there we are known to god we are known to god and we are the children of only one living god we are the children of only one living god and we are known as the christians because we follow jesus christ okay it is very clear and i understand that we are the children of god and we are known to god and we are serving the only one god hallelujah and at the same time the bible says that we are the separated people we are the separated people from from where from where from where it is written in first peter chapter first peter chapter 2 verse 9 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen people a royal priest to the holy nation mm. a people belonging to god that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light amen we are separated from amen we are the chosen people and we are the royal priesthood and holy nation and the people of god's own possession to proclaim the virtues to him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light hallelujah so we are the separated people from the darkness to the marvelous light so we are the people of god we are the children of god we are the separated people and we should know how to maintain the separation in front of the unbelievers hallelujah you know as long as we are the separated people from this world i mean we should understand how to maintain the separation in front of the unbelievers i mean there are many unbelievers in, in, in our society i mean when we mingle with those people we have to know that we are the believers of jesus christ and we have a belief belief system i mean when we stand in the midst of the unbelievers let them know that we are the separated people and we have some christian values in our life you know when uh, cedric was sharing that he was sharing something about the baptism to a person you know even though they are not believers even though they are not believers whenever we go go to go to them and whenever we are standing in front of or in the midst of those people they, we call them as the unbelievers we have to think about that i mean do not try to i mean underestimate the belief system of a, of a christian or of a believer and we should know that we we have we are the separated people and we are the children of god and we have a stand and we have a belief system and we have to stand always for the truth of the word of god hallelujah wherever we are i mean i mean wherever we go wherever we i mean i mean gather together i mean we have to show that i am a christian i am a separated person i mean once i was in a darkness i mean and now i i am in the marvelous light hallelujah so that's the reason i said that i mean the remember that christian freedom is subjected to our identity as christians understand that we have an identity that is that we are the christians and we are the children of god we are the people of god and we will be i mean i mean living according to the word of god and i i, I would like to conclude my message of today and uh, the next points we will be i mean discussing in in another uh, sunday i mean so, so let's all close our eyes to the presence of god and let us pray together hallelujah this morning as we were listening to the word of god that the christian liberty and the brotherly obligation hallelujah the second part will be coming in the next sunday only but the first part the christian liberty is not the matter of knowledge but the the, the matter of love and secondly the christian liberty is subjected 
to our identity as Christians. We are the Christians and we are the believers and we call us ourselves as, a, as children of God and we are, I mean, submitted according to the presence of God, according to the word of God and we have the freedom, we have the liberty but that doesn't mean that, okay, we can do anything but we have a limitation and we are the separated people, we are the called out people and we are standing always firm for the Christ and for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. May God bless every one of us too. This word of God and I request